Hello everyone, welcome to Rachel's studio. And in this tutorial, I want to get you ready to paint this. And the way that we're gonna do that is to do some simple uh, fur painting exercises to practice different techniques that you will need to paint this successfully. And this started out as this painting, which I did for myself to have fun. As an experienced painter, I've been painting over 20 years. 24 years in fact, and so this was my fun, my play, but it came out so well and, and it was so, um, I love the pose and everything about it. I wanted to make this accessible to my beginner Patreon students. So I decided to paint this again with more beginner friendly techniques. So believe it or not, painting tighter and more realistically uh, according to your reference photo, more closely to your reference photo, is a very beginner-friendly way to paint because you learn to control your paint. Also, I painted this painting, which is not done. Um, I still have to add whiskers and final details in the background and all that, and this will become a beginner tutorial on my Patreon. So we're going to do some exercises on just cheap. You don't even need expensive paper for these exercises. This is my, my favorite student grade paper is Hippie Crafter. Um, Hippie Crafter, Canson also makes a good one, but just use whatever you have. These techniques that we're gonna practice, you can practice pretty much on any watercolor paper you have. You do need watercolor paper, but you can use student grade like Hippie Crafter or Canson. You can look in um, my description for links to all my materials. Those are affiliate links. I make a little bit when you use my links, so I do appreciate that, that does help support my channel. I'd also love for you to join my Patreon. You can follow me for free and see what I'm up to. And I also update quite frequently on my community tab here on YouTube. And I post a ton, mostly on Facebook, where you can follow me for free as well. You can join my group, Rachel's Watercolor Workshop. So I'd love for you to join me uh, on Rachel's Watercolor Workshop and you can keep in touch with me closer there. Let's start with the most basic one that I can think of and that would be wet on dry. So I'm gonna use the best fur painting brush that I can think of, which is a generic cheap, it is natural hair, but it's a bamboo calligraphy brush. There's tons of generic ones on eBay, on Amazon, on you can get them on Dick Blick, I do believe. I'm just gonna use a very generic, very cheap um, brush, but these, what makes these brushes great for painting fur is you can splay the bristles and then get really good fur textures, or you can use the tip and get really nice little details. If you don't have that, use whatever you have. Another good one is an eight, size eight round silver black velvet. This one you can splay the bristles as well, but not as well as these. These are so great for painting fur. All right, so these are the two top brushes I would recommend for painting fur with. Uh, I'll demonstrate this one as well, but this one's the best. So let's start with that. I'm going to get my brush wet. And whenever you're going to mix paint, do you want to go and mix paint with a drippy brush like this? No, it'll be too drippy, too wet a paint. So almost every time I dip my brush in the water, I rub it off on the jar and then I pick up my paint. Doesn't matter what color we get, but we'll get burnt sienna. I also don't recommend this palette. I just use this because it fits on my screen better, but um, I recommend using a bigger palette so you have more mixing room and you can get bigger, juicier puddles for larger, more complex painting. But for today, this is perfect. You also wanna mix your color on a white surface so you can see what color you're mixing. But we're gonna just mix Diana's color and let's do the underpainting color. The underpainting is the first layer you put on your paper. I'm gonna have a tissue at hand. We're gonna use this a lot. You can also use a sponge or um, an old rag. I'm gonna mush my brush on my paper to splay the bristles a little bit. All right, so for the underpainting, a lot of brush marks I did were just like that. Look how furry that looks. It's so natural. I mean, this brush just does it like so great. So that will be your 
underlying fur texture. Whether you're painting a cat, dog, lion, whatever, you paint in the direction of the fur and you paint the length of the fur. So if I was painting her tail, I would probably paint longer strokes. A lot of times you want more texture. So without doing anything to this brush, not adding more paint or water or anything, I'm gonna blot it up. And then I'm gonna use kind of the side of the bristles and I'll get an even um, furrier textured look. Okay. So I do that a lot too. If I paint with too watery paint, let's see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna dip my brush. I'm not gonna wipe it off on the jar. I'm gonna go dip. Oh, it's so watery and drippy. And then I try to get some paint, very watery. And look, look how blobby my brush strokes are, right? So that doesn't look like fur, but look what happens if I just do like that. I don't pick up anything else, splay my bristles and then paint. I can even drag through these and fur them out a little bit. Or another thing I like to do is when I have a blob like this, I'll just fur it out. This is hard to do because these are really big puddles, but when you're painting in a smaller area, this really, I use my fingers a lot to fur out an area. Um, can even drag this brush through this wet paint and it puts more paint on my brush and then I can make the most perfect marks, okay? So those are super lights. That's tea consistency paint, which I talk about in my watercolor clock video. You must watch that. That's where you um, mix your paint and it's tea consistency and it drips readily when you tilt your palette up. Um, I should just clean this up. I don't like to clean my palette because I like to use the puddles and not waste paint. The dried paint is easy to reactivate, so I never clean my palette when I'm actually working like a real normal artist, not as an instructor. <laughs> I just let it dry and reuse that paint. All right, so this is tea consistency, right? Uh, quite a bit of water added to a little bit of paint. Tea consistency drips, and that's going to give you light marks like this. All right, so we've got our first layer. Let's pretend we do. We have our first layer. We let it completely dry. How do you tell if it's dry? You touch it with the back of your hand. And if it's dry, it will not be cool. This is still a little a little wet. So let's see what happens if we paint onto, um, it might be dry enough, but if we put a drippy bit of paint on this, a lot of times it'll reactivate it or it'll make a cauliflower. Looks like it's dry enough though. This is kind of, cauliflowering out. So we'll see what happens. But when you paint on, this is messing up. This was dry, I guess, but it'll make a cauliflower and you'll lose control of your paint. So you paint in layers in watercolor, but you let each layer dry. Okay. But this is dry enough to paint on. This is not. So now I'm going to get a little bit thicker paint for a little bit darker mark. Okay. Let me, let's try it with this brush because many of you may not have a bamboo brush. Let's try to get these effects with my um, kind of fraying out <laughs> silver black velvet size eight round. Um, I'm gonna blot it. And if I use the edge and blot, I can get pretty good texture. Let's see if it'll splay. Um, I'm gonna mush it and splay it. And I can use pretty light texture. So. I can still get these kinds of textures if I work a little harder, um, but it is allowing me to get those textures. It's just, it makes me work for it a little bit more than this brush does, okay? So now this is, is dry. So let's say we wanna build up the textures in this fur um, and make it look really realistic. Now we'll go in with milk consistency, milk consistency, when you, it's this thin on your palette, it will be, but it won't run. Again, I'm going to blot, 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 splay. Okay. And that's my second layer. Um, what if we wanted to add, like Diana has, she has um, this undercoat of brown and then these black markings on top. 
So let's try that. I'm going to clean out my brush, get a bit, of, little bit of lamp black, very watery, and I'm going to mush my brush to make those really nice textures. I'm going to blot, and see now I can paint that over my base. If I wanted a little darker, I add a little more paint, but I didn't add more water. I didn't dip in. I took my already wet brush and just picked up a little more paint. And if it gets too blobby, bl blot and then go back, right? So that's painting with more milk consistency. And you, I'm painting in the direction of the fur the length of the fur. All right, one other technique that I want that is a basic technique that every watercolor painter needs to learn. It's a super basic technique and that is softening edges. When you have an edge and the edge that I've softened a lot with my, in this tutorial was I painted this dark shadow, but then I needed to soften this edge because it's a soft shadow edge. So let's recreate that here with and I'm gonna have two brushes. I'm gonna have a painting brush and I'm gonna have a, a blending brush. So I'm gonna get my blending brush clean, right? And I'm gonna wring it out. I'm wringing out all the water, maybe getting a little dip of water on the tip and squeezing it gently into the bristles. So that little dip of water goes throughout the brush. So it's a damp brush. It's not completely squeezed out. It has a little bit of dampness in it, but it's clean. This is called a thirsty brush now, it's thirsty. It's thirsty, y'all, it wants something. All right, so say I paint a shadow under the cat's chin like this, but I wanna soften this very hard edge. I go in, okay, I need a little more water in my brush. I'm gonna scrub out a little bit of the water and then, and I, this is student grade paper, so it's not doing it as well, but see how it softens the edge? And if it's too wet, it'll create what's looking like a cauliflower. That is the drawback of painting on um, not as good paper. Let me show you real fast. Okay, this is good paper. I'm gonna use the back of this. Let's, let's demonstrate this on good paper. So this is uh, some sort of cold press paper. I'm not even sure what brand. It doesn't matter, but it is 100% cotton. Let's do this exercise again. Ooh, it's so nubbly. This might even be a rough paper, which I never paint on, but okay. So now we have a harsh edge. Good night. That is harsh. We need to soften it. So I'm going to take my, um, I might need a little more water though. Um, I'm going to soften that edge like that. All right. So I softened it. And this is hundred percent cotton. It's working with me a lot better than the student grade paper, right? You can even blot up through there and go in with clean, clear water. So that's now a soft edge. Oh, see the cauliflower that happened? That's because that's what happens if you paint onto still damp paper. It'll create this cauliflower. Um, I must have dripped right there. This is still wet. If I drip too wet, if my brush is too wet and I paint onto wet or damp buckling paper, it'll create a cauliflower. So just be aware of that. But see how um, nuanced of textures you can get? And you can continue to paint um, with darker and darker. Actually, I don't want to use that brush. You can say we want to go in and we want to put darker marks on this fur like she has. And I, I'm really trying to get a nubbly look. So I keep blotting until I get the, as much nub as I want. Okay, I'm going to get more paint see how that's called dry brush when you use the side of your bristles and you get kind of a texture look it's a great way to get texture and fur so that can be a really great thing so practice that technique too and you blot a lot and you can kind of see the texture of the um of the tooth of the paper as well All right, so that's a really dark mark, but really textured and really great fur texture. All right, let's look at the tail. Um, 
her tail has these long, beautiful long um, textures. You can use this brush for sure, or you can use like a rigger. Here's a rigger, it has long bristles. And you just, those are really great. And if they look too um, hard edged and they look too literal, you can, look, I'm cleaning out my brush, I'm wiping the excess water off, maybe a little um, gentle dab, and then I paint, I need more water, paint back through this and loosen it up here and there. So that can, on good paper, it'll look even way better. Um, but that's simply how you paint longer hairs. And don't paint individual hairs like this. You want to paint in clumps. And so often um, there's these Vs. See this? This is a perfect example right here. There's Vs of shadows in between the lighter clumps. And often in watercolor, you're painting the shadows instead of the thing itself. Like this fluff area, you don't paint that. You paint the shadow between it to bring it out. So I painted in a V. All right, so more like you make your V like that. This is have, giving me a good little texture too, isn't it? So, so often you're going to be painting clumps and you paint the shadow clumps in between the lighter furs. And you look at the shapes created by the shadows between the clumps and paint those in watercolor. So, so often you're painting around lighter areas. Look at that cauliflower now as it dries and look at this cauliflower. All right. And if you want to um, soften this up, you can get your brush wet, get the extra dro few drops off of it and then paint across some of the boundaries. This paper is not doing great because again, it's just student grade, but this student grade cheap paper is great for practice. And then once you feel good on your cheap student grade paper, you can move on to doing something like this. And I sure hope you will. I hope you will come paint with me. Um, this painting, it's, uh, let's see, it's today is like February 7th ish. And this should be available, I would say, by February 12th. But I have other super beginner paintings on my Patreon now. And I have this really cool thing on my Patreon they put in called Collections. So even if you're not paying, you can go and look around in my collections and see what I have. So as a free member of my Patreon, you can go into my collections and then click on the collections I named Super Beginner. And then click around in there and see if there's anything you really want to paint with me. And I designed those super beginner tutorials as really full of extra information specific to beginners. Like you use the white of your paper for the whites and you use layers to build up texture and value. Just things I don't paint, talk about in my more advanced tutorials. I do talk about in those. They're like courses. They're really great. So I highly recommend checking those out. Sam the Tuxedo is, to date, my best tutorial I've ever done. You will learn so much, but you will need to watch it at least three times because there's so much information. So I hope this helped. I hope this gave you some great ideas on how to paint fur. And um, I hope you'll come paint with me. But if not, just come join my group, my Facebook group for free. Follow my Patreon for free. Check out my community tab once in a while. I'm always posting there. Lots of cat stuff. <laughs> so I hope you'll do that. And until next time, go watercolor your world. Bye, everybody.